A US government review has found that more than 46 types of military aircraft failed to meet mission capability readiness goals in any year from 2011 through 2019, including most fighter jets. The Government Accountability Office said in the report, fighter jets generally fell short in the metric used to assess the health of aircraft fleets. While each of the services set their own goals, Defense Secretary Mark Esper in September 2018 ordered that the F-22 Raptor, F-16 Fighting Falcon, F-35 Lightning II and F-A-18 variants be mission capable at least 80% of the time by the end of the fiscal year 2019. The aging F-16 and F-A-18 Hornet and Super Hornet variants failed in all nine years and also saw decreasing rates of mission capability. The electronic warfare variant EA-18G Growler met service targets in only two of those years. The F-22 Raptor, which has an average age of 12 and is less than half as old as most other fighter jets, also failed to meet its goals nine years running. Each of the three variants of the F-35 has met their goals at least one year out of nine years. The low availability is mainly attributed to parts supply issues as well as lingering technical problems. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One with cross-platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. Reports from the U.S. Department of Defense indicate that the U.S. Air Force plans to open a major new air base on Tinian Island. The base is speculated to be intended to serve as an alternative to Anderson Air Force Base on Guam in times of war. This development comes as part of a larger effort by the U.S. military to expand its network of air bases in East Asia, which is itself part of the broader Pivot to Asia initiative, under which the major portion of the U.S. military will be focused on the area. Viewers may note that Tinian Island, which is part of the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Islands, was seized by the U.S. military from the Japanese Empire in 1944 and remains an American possession. It's located approximately 100 miles or 160 kilometers north of Guam. The decision seemed to be influenced by the fact that Anderson Air Force Base is vulnerable to strikes by Chinese long-range missiles and bomber aircraft. As per reports, the Russian Air Force will receive its first fully operational Su-57 fighter jet in December 2020. Viewers may note that Russian President Mr. Putin had laid out a plan for acquiring 76 Su-57. A much larger follow-up order is also expected in the coming day. The fighter is still a work in progress and several key components are being developed. This includes a new engine named Saturn 30, which will reportedly be the most powerful engine used by any fighter in the world. Other advanced features being researched comprises laser weapons, very long-range hypersonic missiles, and artificial intelligence. Iran's English language press TV reported that the weapon used in killing of prominent Iranian nuclear scientist Mohsen Fakhrizadeh last week was made in Israel, the Islamic Republic's longtime enemy. An unnamed source told press TV the weapons collected from the site of the terrorist act where Fakhrizadeh was assassinated bear the logo and specification of the Israeli military industry. Speaking before the Press TV report, 
Israeli intelligence minister Eli Cohen told radio station 103 FM that he did not know who was responsible. Mosin Fakhrizadeh was thought to be the key player in Iran's nuclear weapons program. He was killed in an ambush on a highway near Tehran when his car was sprayed with bullets. A report says Israel's PM Olmert played a top-secret tape of Fakhrizadeh for President Bush in a 2008 meeting, which recorded the nuclear scientist speaking about his efforts to produce five warheads. The U.S. has approved the sale of 90 million U.S. dollars worth of military hardware and services for the fleet of C-130J Super Hercules military transport aircraft operated by the Indian Air Force. The Defense Security Cooperation Agency DSCA, of the Department of Defense said that this proposed sale will support the foreign policy and national security of the United States by helping to strengthen the U.S.-Indian strategic relationship and improve the security of a major defense partner. DSCA said that India continues to be an important force for political stability, peace and economic progress in the Indo-Pacific and South Asia region in a major sales notification to Congress. Indian requests included consumables, spares and repair return parts cartridge actuated devices, propellant actuated devices, CAD, PAD, fire extinguisher cartridges, flare cartridges, advanced radar warning receiver ship set, 10 lightweight night vision binocular, 10 AN AVS-9 night vision goggles, GPS, electronic warfare, instruments and lab equipment support. The Pentagon said that the proposed sale ensures the previously procured aircraft operates effectively to serve the needs of the Indian Air Force. The Army and the Navy transport requirements, local and international humanitarian assistance, and regional disaster relief. A group of Chinese researchers says they've created an aircraft engine that can propel an airframe as fast as 11,800 miles per hour, or Mach 16. They used a design suggested by an American scientist whose work has been largely forgotten. According to the South China Morning Post, the Chinese scientists were likely inspired by the speculative work of Richard Morrison, an American engineer for the U.S. National Aeronautics and Space Agency NASA who suggested the engine design in a 1980 paper that aimed to address problems created by a conventional scramjet design. As per the outlet, the revolutionary new engine is a standing oblique detonation ramjet, sadramjet design, with no moving parts, using the plane's superfast speed to push air into the chamber where it's injected with hydrogen fuel and detonated, flying out the back of the engine as thrust. As per reports, the Sadram jet design, tested in the recent experiments, improved on the scramjet and ramjet concept by replacing diffusive combustion with an oblique detonation that is a unique pressure gain phenomenon in nature, according to the abstract of a paper published by a group of Chinese scientists in the Chinese Journal of Aeronautics. Viewers may note that China, the US, Russia, Israel, and India are all working to develop hypersonic weapons since their speed enables them to evade the current air defense systems. The United States has formally withdrawn from the Open Skies Treaty. The State Department has declared that the United States is no longer a party to the treaty on open skies. This comes six months after President Donald Trump announced the decision. Viewers may note that the decades-old treaty that permits member countries to conduct short-notice unarmed reconnaissance flights over other countries to collect data on military forces and activities. The treaty was first proposed in 1955, but after many rounds of negotiations, it was signed in 1992 and came into force on January 1, 2002. Currently, 34 states are party to the treaty. Well, Kyrgyzstan is signed but not ratified it. 
Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has accused Russia of flagrantly and continuously violating the treaty in various ways for years. He added, after careful consideration, including input from allies and key partners, it has become abundantly clear that it's no longer in America's interest to remain a party to the treaty on open skies. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.